before conducting the examination, always greet the patient. When taking the blood pressure, make sure that the arm of the patient is resting on top of a table at heart level, roughly at the fourth interspace at its junction with the sternum. Make sure the arm selected is free of clothing. Palpate the brachial artery to confirm that it has a viable pulse. Center the inflatable bladder over the brachial artery, making sure that the cuff is approximately 2.5 cm above the antecubital crease, or roughly about 2 to 3 fingers apart from the cuff to the antecubital crease. Secure the cuff snugly just enough to wrap the patient's arm. Too tight, and it can give falsely low readings. Too loose, and it can give falsely high readings. Estimate the systolic pressure through palpation by first feeling for the radial pulse with the tips of the first two fingers of one hand. Rapidly inflate the cuff until the radial pulse disappears. Read this pressure on the manometer and add 30 mm mercury. Deflate the cuff at a rate of 2 to 3 mm mercury per second. Wait 15 to 30 seconds. Place the bell or the diaphragm of the stethoscope lightly on the brachial artery and avoid pressing on the artery too much. Inflate the cuff rapidly again at the maximum level measured earlier using the radial pulse and then deflating at a rate of 2 to 3 mm mercury per second. Take note of where on the manometer the Karotkov sounds are first heard. This is the systolic pressure. Continue lowering the pressure slowly until the sounds become muffled and disappear. This is the diastolic pressure. When no sounds are no longer heard, the cough can be deflated rapidly until zero. Before instructing the patient to lie down, instruct the patient to undress up to the waist. Always ask permission before conducting the examination. For female patients, it is best to ask them to wear a gown or a drape to cover their chest. Position the patient at a 30 to 45 degree inclined plane on the examination bed. Gently turn the patient's head to the left. With a pen light placed tangentially across the neck, identify the internal jugular venous pulsation above the clavicle. Using two rulers, place one ruler perpendicular to the sternal angle of Louis and the other ruler perpendicularly to the internal jugular venous pulsation. The two rulers must meet and create a right angle. Take note of the height of the JVP above the sternomanubrial angle. The JVP value is measured by adding 5 cm water to the height of the jugular venous pulsation. The examiner should take note of the character of the carotid arteries by palpation using the tips of his fingers. Remember not to compress both carotid arteries at the same time as this can temporarily obstruct the flow of blood to the brain. Auscultate for the carotid pulse on both sides of the neck using the bell of the stethoscope. Always ask permission from the patient before lowering the drape to expose the chest wall. Identify the following landmarks. The left and right parasternal border, the mid-sternal line, the left midclavicular line, the left anterior axillary line, the left mid-axillary line, and the left posterior axillary line. Note for the presence or absence of precordial bulging. Identify the point of maximal impulse located at or medial to the left midclavicular line in the fifth or possibly the fourth intercostal space. Palpate for the heaves, lifts, or thrills using your finger pads. To check for thrills, Press the ball of your hand firmly on the chest.
started the phase and entry stethoscope to the apex. With your stethoscope in the right second entry space, close to the sternum. Move along the left sternal border in each interspace from the second through the fifth, and then to the apex. Identify and locate the peripheral arterial pulses, the brachial, brachial, and their salad speedy. Obliteal Characterize and compare the arterial pulses on both sides. Note for any cyanosis, whether central or peripheral. Also note for the presence or absence of clubbing and bipedal edema. When conducting an examination of the opposite sex, make sure that there is a third party present in the room. He or she can either be a nurse or your secretary.